Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, and thanks for calling this hearing. Um, this is a big issue, and we're forgetting about you two uh, rock bones right there in the middle, the small businesses who are impacted by this. We're, we're engaged in an important policy discussion, but you're living this. Uh, and so I apologize if you two uh, get shunned a little bit today, but I very much appreciated your testimony because you, small businessmen and women, will turn this country around. And we here in Washington make it too darn difficult for you to do that. I, I get so tired of hearing this line that, you know, if we only increase supply, if our domestic supply, it could take five to 10 years. We said that five to 10 years ago. We said that 10 to 15 years ago. We said that 20 to 25 years ago. And Mr. Greenberger, respectively, I hear your argument on, on speculation. I respect it to a large degree, but you so dismiss, it's not true. so dismiss basic supply and demand. Um, it, it's like we, we, we look for a bad guy in every, in every debate we have up here, and, and the other side tends to demonize big bad oil, not understanding that 95% of the oil produced in this country comes from independent uh, oil companies. Um, we don't have, this administration does not have an energy policy. And so he again, the president again clearly a few months ago made up his mind, Professor Greenberger, that he was going to jump on that bad guy, go after speculators to make up for uh, an, utterly, an utter lack of a policy. Mr. McNally, this notion of we can't start drilling tomorrow uh, all over the place because we have an abundance of areas where we could impact supply, but we may not see the effects of that for three or four or five or six or ten years. Is that true? If, if this country aggressively and energetically decided to snap their fingers and go after all of the supplies, all of the oil supplies we have, could you see some more short-term impact on prices? Uh, in the short term, I think market participants would want to see uh, real barrels show up. So I would be cautious in, in, a, in, uh, in expecting too much of a price increase, a price decrease, even if we were to wave a wand and open up everything in the very, very short term. Unfortunately, I wish it weren't the case, but unfortunately, in the short term, there is very little we can do. However, what I described, we are living with the consequences of five to ten years of bad bad um, and, and bad dreams, if you will, bad surprises. Two billion people want to drive. We are not increasing supply as we used to. The, the Persian Gulf is a mess. We are living with that now. What we, what we can do now with, with our own resources under the ground, we can start creating good surprises so that in the next three to five to seven years, maybe we can find ways to uh, increase production, uh, to diversify further out of the Persian Gulf, to find ways to scale up a cellulosic or, or maybe other, other ways to make battery cars work better. So we live with the consequences of surprises and trends that develop over the previous five to seven to ten years. We absolutely need to right now work on making the next three to five to seven years ones where the surprises are good ones. What, what Mr. Professor Greenberger refers to this difference between speculators and gamblers. How do you see that distinction? Do uh, you see a distinction? Yeah, I, d I don't see that at all. Um, I, uh, what we have are the, the oil price and oil markets, exchange markets and the derivatives markets are composed of physical consumers or producers of oil who want to transfer their price risk to those willing to bear it, which include uh, speculators. What Mr. Professor Greenberger is also talking about, though, are these passive long-only investors. These are folks, pension funds, university endowments, re you and me, where we want to put a part of our portfolio into commodities, a basket of commodities that includes oil. Now, the CFTC has looked at this very closely because there is no question this money has come into the market. That is for sure. Um, but the CFTC has looked into it, and they have disaggregated careful data, and they show, for example, in early 2008, as oil prices were lurching up to that $147 high, passive investors were actually selling their oil futures. And I would be happy to point that out for the record in that CFTC report. So the folks who try to figure out if it is the rooster causing the sun to rise or the rooster just sort of crowing, you know, 
in coincidence with the sun rising, looking at Granger causality tests and all kinds of math and speaking Greek and everything, the folks who have poured into that who are unbiased, who have the information, have not yet said or not concluded that these investors, whether it is these passive long only folks just buying and holding or speculators who buy and sell, have distorted or manipulated or uh, influenced the price of oil. And, and, and Mr. Chairman, let me just close with this. Ms. Driscoll and Mr. Smith, uh, it is our job here to make life easier for you so that you can be productive and profitable and grow businesses and hire people. There is not a lot we can or should do here. Often the things we do here make things worse. We have an abundance of oil on our land and around our shores. Uh, it makes sense for us, I think, and I hope you agree, to go after those resources in as sensitive and as a, a responsible way as we can to make life easier for you, too. Thank you for coming. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Barletta.